Level up your game with the Corsair Dark Core RGB Special Edition. The mouse features a trio of connectivity options including 1 millisecond wireless, low latency Bluetooth, or a wired connection. Nine programmable buttons and three zone backlighting can be customized and saved to the onboard memory, and an ergonomic shape ensures hours of supreme comfort and grip. To learn more, click on the link below. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. So a few months back, I assembled the Enthu Elite build, which was this crazy over the top $12,000 custom water cooled behemoth of a system that could handle pretty much anything you threw at it. And today we're gonna be talking specifically about that system's storage configuration and what my experiences has been like while video editing on it. Because a lot of you guys have been asking me over the last few months, uh, ever since I announced that I would be using that system as my daily driver for video editing here at the office. So that's what we're gonna explore more of today. Now, for those of you unaware, this is no ordinary storage setup. While we are booting off of a simple 250 gig 960 EVO NVMe M.2 SSD with our Adobe Creative Cloud software loaded up onto it as well, the other disk that we're using to store all the footage we'll be editing with is a four terabyte 960 Pro NVMe RAID 0 array. The theoretical throughput on this setup is astronomically fast. It's, it's bonkers. But at the same time, it doesn't represent the kind of real world performance you might expect to see inside of an application like Adobe Premiere Pro. So today I thought it would be kind of interesting to compare this over the top config to a bunch of other common alternatives like a simple mechanical hard drive, a SATA based SSD, and even a single NVMe SSD to sort of see how they all stack up. Hopefully by the end of this video, we'll be able to tell if these super high crazy theoretical numbers actually do us any favors inside of a professional video editing workflow. But before we get started with uh, some of the testing, let's quickly go over the specs of this system, which is just an absolute beast. Uh, for starters, we've got the i9-7980XE overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz on all 18 cores and 36 threads um, that was delitted and had a fresh application of liquid metal from the folks over at Gamers Nexus, so shout out to those guys. Uh, an Asus Rampage 6 Extreme motherboard with 128 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z RGB DDR4 at 3200 speed, two Asus Strix OC GTX 1080 Ti's in SLI that are being water cooled by a custom loop that I made that's also water cooling the CPU, mind you. Once again, our boot drive is a 250 gig Samsung 960 Evo, and our editing disc is comprised of two two terabyte 960 Pros in RAID 0. This is all being powered by a 1200 watt power supply from Enermax. As I mentioned, Adobe Premiere Pro is loaded up onto our C drive, that's that 960 Evo, and our media cache is currently going to our editing disk, that four terabyte NVMe RAID array. And this is gonna be emulated for all of the other uh, disk tests. So for example, when we're testing out our mechanical hard drive, I'm gonna have the media cache going to that as well. So with that said, let's talk about the experience we had when ingesting or capturing footage, which is a very important step of the whole video editing workflow. Regardless of what kind of editor you are, what software you use or your style or technique, every editor has to at one point or another capture the footage from their camera's removable media over to their computer. And the faster you're able to do that, the more time you have for editing, the sooner you can get into it. So the sample footage that we're using for this test was provided by Chris, and he often works with RED cameras. In fact, the footage here was shot on a RED Dragon at 6K resolution at 24 FPS, or 23.976 to be exact. Um, but he gave me eight files to deal with, which adds up to be about 22 gigabytes. So starting with our hard drive, with an old magnetic platter, we were able to transfer this batch of files in about a minute and 47 seconds, or 107 seconds total. Uh, and that was at about 68 megabytes per second, which is pretty typical of a mechanical hard drive. And in case you were curious, we're using a two terabyte Hitachi 7200 RPM drive. Our one terabyte HyperX Savage SATA based SSD did a whole lot better and was able to transfer the files in a minute and 14 seconds or 74 seconds. And that was at a transfer rate of 300 megabytes per second. Now, before you get too excited about how the NVMe or NVMe RAID performed in this test, remember that we're still being limited by the USB 3.0 interface, which is what we're using to transfer all of these files through from the camera's media to our computer. Computer. So whether you're going SATA or NVMe, you won't really see much difference in ingest times due to the transfer speed limitations of USB 3. As it turns out, the only real performance jump you see in this test is when switching from a mechanical hard drive to an SSD, whether it be SATA or NVMe. Our next round of tests involve editing and scrubbing through the actual footage inside of Premiere Pro. 
And the files that Chris provided us uh, are actually clips of him. We can see his face, we can see him run around on camera. He's actually testing the lighting for whatever project he was working on. But it's good for us, the fact that there's constant motion or movement on camera means that we can easily spot when a drive is having trouble. Uh, when it stutters, when it's choppy, um, it's gonna be very apparent um, on camera whenever it's happening. So it'll allow us to sort of give a better representation of how each of these drives perform. Uh, I should also mention before we get into it that um, all of these tests are initially run at full 100% playback resolution. So in the program monitor in Adobe Premiere Pro, that is being played back at full 6K resolution until or unless I specify otherwise. So just bear that in mind. So our hard drive was able to play back uh, the 6K footage at full resolution at 1X, no problem. At real time speed, it was perfectly fine, no hiccups here. But as soon as we go to 2X or 4X, things start to get a little bit choppy. Just every couple seconds, there's a there's a little stutter, there's maybe a drop frame or so, um, which kind of pulls us out of the experience. It's still very usable, but uh, a little bit distracting to say the least. It's not until we get to 8X speed when we just go full choppiness and we can no longer really work uh, at this level of performance. It's just, a, it's just too much of a drag. Um, we actually had to lower the resolution down to 1 8th, 1 8th resolution in order to play 8x speed fluidly. And even beautiful 6K red footage uh, at 8th resolution doesn't look so great. So that's not really an ideal situation that any video editor wants to be in. I also tested the drives to see how they would play back time-lapse footage. So basically I took uh, the sample footage that Chris gave me and I sped it all up at 5000x speed and basically just tried to play it to see if it would if it would run. And uh, sure enough, the hard drive was choppy AF. So uh, we re really couldn't tell what was going on um, when playing it back at that ludicrous speed. Our SATA-based HyperX Savage SSD performed a lot better here and was able to play back all the footage at full resolution very smoothly up until 32X speed where we saw some choppiness for the first five to 10 seconds. After that, it eventually sort of caught up with itself and became smooth again. Fortunately, we passed the time-lapse test with flying colors and were able to play back the 5,000 speed footage at full resolution very, very smoothly. So that was very impressive. Next, we had our single NVMe drive, which performed pretty much on par with our SATA-based SSD. Saw little to no hiccups all the way up to 32X speed when it became a little bit choppy for the first few seconds, and then it eventually evened out and became super smooth. And the time-lapse playback at full resolution, 5,000 speed, worked like a charm as well. Finally, our NVMe RAID array was an absolute animal with virtually no signs of slowdown or stuttering in sight. I mean, the thing just chewed through 32X speed like, like it was butter, and uh, that goes double for the time-lapse footage playing back at full resolution. But if I'm being perfectly honest, the experience I had on the SATA-based SSD was one, perfectly adequate in my opinion, and two, not that far off from what the NVMe RAID array was able to achieve. And when you consider the price difference between the two, the SATA SSD is clearly the better value for 99.9% .9 of users, except that 0.1% who can actually leverage the full potential of an NVMe RAID array. The last round of tests revolve around rendering because it's an important step of the video editing process. And I figure a lot of you guys might be curious to hear whether or not your storage solution has any impact on rendering times. The short answer is no. Uh, as, as we're about to look at the, at the data here, um, whether we were rendering out with our hard drive, with all the footage, and, and also being the target drive for our render, our rendered file being a hard drive versus the NVMe RAID array, uh, we still rendered the same 10 minute file in 10 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, there was virtually no difference regardless of what drive we were rendering to or where the files were stored. So uh, that just goes to show and, and sort of a reminder that rendering really relies on a couple things, your CPU, your memory, and your GPU if you're enabling some sort of GPU acceleration, uh, which I was for this particular test. But if you're looking to, to cut down your encoding times, then upgrading your storage solution is not really the first place you wanna look. You wanna look at those other areas. For me, what this all boils down to is that you don't really need to spend an arm and a leg on a crazy fancy NVMe RAID array if you wanna edit some 4K or even 6K footage on a prosumer level which is kind of a bummer for me because I really wish I could utilize all of this raw horsepower that I have, but it really doesn't make too much of a difference when it comes to editing. At the same time, it's good news for someone who doesn't have $2,500 to spend on a setup like that, but still wants to have a super smooth editing experience. And for those users, I would suggest a SATA SSD. Uh, if you can afford it, 
get a single NVMe SSD. You'll get uh, slightly better transfer speeds when you're uh, moving files around, things like that. But for the most part, a SATA-based SSD is still gonna be perfectly fine for most editors' needs, uh, especially if you're just on the consumer or prosumer level. Of course, once you get into like, you know, the really, really professional grade stuff, uh, then things are a little bit different there. But for the most part, a SATA SSD still works just fine for video editing. If you guys have any experiences of your own, please feel free to share them with the class, what kind of system that you're editing on, uh, what drives you're using and things like that. We'd love to hear all about it down below. But that's pretty much gonna do it for now, guys. So toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon if you liked what you saw today. You can also follow me on Floatplane for three bucks a month so you can get all of my content a week early without ads. I'll drop a link for that in the description below. Till next time, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a good one and I'll see y'all in the next video.